Now that we're able to retrieve our current weather information from our function from the last video, it's now time to start building out our user interface here for this weather app. Now, in this video, we're going to be building out the navigation for the Ad City component or this view right here. Okay. So to get started here, I want to do some cleanup before we actually get into creating that component. So in the previous video, we went ahead and created this Get City Weather, which is going to look at Firebase, pull all of our collection of cities, and then return the current weather and then store it here in the cities array. So we no longer have use for this Get Current Weather function we created in the second part of the series. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that. And we also no longer need this data of city, so I'm going to remove that as well. Okay, so for our navigation, we're actually going to be creating our first component for this project. Now, where we're going to do that at is in the components folder here. I'm going to create a new file, and this is going to be called navigation, and we're going to give it dot view as the ending, and that'll go ahead and create our view file. Now we need to generate our view, uh, our layout here, or our template. So what we can do is we can type in view and using Vuter, I can actually click here at the very top and it'll generate the template, the script and the style tag for us all without having to type it out. So that's why I said this plugin is just very useful. Now to begin here, I'm going to come into the script tag here and we're going to give this a name and we're going to call this navigation. Okay. Now, before we actually get into the HTML and the CSS for uh, this component, I do want to briefly explain how these components work, specifically the style tag, because the template, that is pretty self-explanatory. That's where all the HTML goes for each component. Now, the styling is going to be a little different um, as opposed to how the app works right here. And we're going to be targeting the scoped for the style tag here, which is going to be the difference. So if I remove this style because we want to set it up to use um, SCSS, so we can actually open up a new bracket here and we can look for the uh, version with Vuter called SCSS scoped dot view. Now, the main difference when we're using scoped as opposed to not scoped is that all the styling or the CSS that's inside of this component will only work with the HTML inside of this component and not any other one. So it makes it nice to kind of use more generic class names and just, you know, only apply styling uh, for that component in that component. So then it's easier to uh, trace back and edit in my opinion. So you're not looking through a giant, um, you know, uh, sheet of uh, your styling. So everyone has their own preference. I love to use the scope portion for my styling. I know other developers don't. So I guess it is whatever you personally like best. And for this series, we're going to be utilizing uh, the scoped for our components. Okay. Now let's go ahead and begin with our HTML here. So what we're going to say is inside of our template template tags here, we're going to start with the header and this is going to have a class of container and then also add city. Okay. Now inside of here, we're going to have our nav tag. And then inside of here, we're going to start with the span because we need to have the uh, the span for the name of add city in here. So we're going to say span. We're going to uh, got to go back, open that up, and we're going to say add city. Okay. Next up, we want to have a um, we're going to do another row because we're going to set the nav as a flex row, but we're going to have these icons in here. So we're going to want to do another row for our icons. So we're going to actually store those in another div inside of our nav tag here. So we're going to say div, give it a class of right for the right hand side. And then I believe I can just copy and paste these in here. These are going to be our font awesome classes. So we're going to be using the pencil or edit icon. Uh, we have the refresh and also the plus and it will look just like these three right here. Okay, so we have saved that, but we don't see the HTML here on the screen. So before we actually do our styling, let me show you how we import a component here in our app file. Okay, so first thing we need to do when we actually want to use navigation or this component in this app file is we need to import it similar to how we imported our database and simple, uh, similarly how we imported Axios. So let's go ahead and below our database here, let's go ahead and import and we're going to call this navigation and we're going to say from and then we're going to open up our uh, quotes here and we're going to look for our components folder and then we want to look for our navigation. Okay, 
Now, that's not all. Now what we have to do inside of our export default, we have to actually call the components. So we're gonna open this up and then we need to define the component name that we imported inside of this components right here. And then we need a comma there to get rid of that error. So now we are able to use this component inside of our template here. So how we can do this is actually before we begin here, I want to change this from an ID to a class and we're gonna call this main, okay? Now, inside of our main class here, we can actually simply open up our code block here, paste in navigation, which is the name of the component we imported here, and then we're gonna do a slash and then close that. And now if we save that, we should see that we have our component of navigation or the HTML here on our app. So that is good. Now, I want to do a few uh, bits of global styling here in our app before we head back to style up the navigation specifically So what we're gonna do is I'm going to actually put a class here of Navigation on our navigation component and then I want to come down here to the styling and do a little bit of styling So I want to target the main overall So we're gonna say main and we're gonna start by giving this simply a height of 100 VH and that's going to be it Next up, I want to target the actual navigation class we put on the component itself. So we're gonna say navigation here, if I can spell. And what we wanna do here is we're gonna give this a Z index of 99 because this is going to be a position fix and there will be opportunity for this to scroll. So we wanna make sure that the uh, navigation always stays on top and that'll work with a Z index of 99. We're gonna position this fixed we want to give this a max width of 1024 pixels and then we want to give it a, a default width of 100 so if it's um not if it's not above 10 if it's not let me see how to say this i always get this confused so if the width is uh smaller than 1024 it's going to take up 100 percent of the available space okay and then we want to toss a box shadow on here, which I'm gonna copy and paste in really quick because it's a little bit lengthy. So there we go. Now, if we save that, you should see that this navigation is uh, taking up 100% of the space. We have that box shadow and that looks good. Now, the last thing I wanna do is if you recall, we added a container class on here. Now we're gonna be using this container class in more than one component. So it makes sense to put this outside here in our global styling in our app. So just below, um, we'll actually go right below navigation here. And we're gonna say container. And we're simply just gonna give this a padding on the left and right of 20 pixels. So if I save that, you, sh you should see the padding is now uh, on the left of 20 and it's on the right of 20 as well. Okay, so that's going to be it for now for our global styling. So let's head back to our navigation component and actually begin styling up uh, this nav. So the first thing we want to do in here is you want to target the header, open this up, and we're gonna target our nav here. Now we want this nav to be a flex row, so we're gonna say display and put that as flex. We're going to give this a color of white we want to, let's see here, give this a padding on the top and bottom of 30 pixels and then set the left and right to zero. And then we wanna justify the content space between. So if I save that, you'll see the padding is added, all the color is set to white, so we're not going to see our text because currently the background is white. So let's go ahead and change that. So as you can see right here, we gave the header a class of Ad City as well. So that's where we're going to um, give our background color. So we're gonna say add city. And the color for this is going to be 313. Or 313 and then 640. And I forgot to actually say background. Let's see here, getting ahead of myself. Background color. And we gotta move that over here. And there we go. And doesn't like that, what do we do wrong? Add city, background color. Oh, you know why? Because we're nesting it inside the header. It's actually a part of the header, so we have to go outside of the header. And there we go. That should be good. Okay, so now things are looking good. The only thing we're going to need to do now 
is we want to, let's see here, we want to target these uh, icons individually here. So what we're going to say is we want to use pseudo selectors here. So we're going to say right, and we want to target the I nth child here. And we want to target the second one, but we also want to get the third one. So I'm going to copy this down and we're going to say two and change that to three. And inside of here, we're going to simply give this a margin left of 16 pixels to add some separation uh, between our icons here. So if I save that, we should be good. Why are we getting an error? Because we have a comma there still. Okay. So there we go. Now we have our evenly spaced icons. That looks great. Now, lastly, or the couple things we need to do here is we want to give these uh, I, uh, icons here a bigger font size. So I'm going to say I, and then let's say font size, not sirs, size of 20 pixels. And that should increase them. That looks good. And lastly, inside of the header, our span needs to be a little bit of a thicker font. So we're going to go outside of the right here. And we're going to say span, and we're going to give this a font, let's see here, weight of 600. Okay, so that should do it. Now, we're not going to add any, because as you can see here, let me just kind of back it up. So right now, you can see when I hit edit, this happens. If I refresh it, the uh, application will refresh. If I hit add, this all pop up. So we're not going to add that here in this video. That'll be in a video or two later on. I just wanted to get this all built out. Once we have our um, actual cities populated in here, then we'll come back and we'll hook up some functions and uh, event listeners here to actually make all this work as it is in the demo. So that's going to do it for this video. So we went ahead and created our first component, which is our navigation. Now in the next video, I'm going to show you how we can take our data here of cities and use it in other components when we create our actual um, our grid for all of our cities because we're going to need to pass this data to our components. So I'm going to show you how to do that in the next video.